This is the video for the Lecture 2 Mechanical Terms. Uh, if you look in Lecture 2 on Blackboard, you will notice the first two. These are essentially the same thing. Uh, you have just text version. Uh, so these are all from the Uniform Mechanical Code, or UMC 2012. Uh, these terms match the same exact terms that we have on the mechanical slides. Just the mechanical slide PDF has visuals for it. These terms are directly out of the codebook, and they are very specific and written for people who understand the uh, terms, theory, and trades and practices. It's not really an instruction manual. So we're going to start with a conditioned air. Uh, that is air that has been treated to achieve a desired level of temperature, humidity, and cleanliness. That is basically any heated or cooled air that you would get out of a diffuser. And in this diagram, uh, you'll see the conditioned air is going to be anything coming from your air handler unit or your heater. Uh, next is exhaust air. This is the air being removed from any space or piece of equipment and conveyed directly to the atmosphere by means of opening or duct. So the exhaust air, uh, they have a couple different types. You have a more targeted fan. So this would be like your uh, exhaust fan in your restroom, your bathroom at your house. You know, you walk in and you uh, flip a switch and it'll start pulling air directly out of the bathroom and eject it from your house. Some houses have a just full exhaust that this fan will always be running and constantly be uh, ejecting air out of your house to recycle it. And that gets balanced with your outside air, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Next is the air handling unit. That's a blower or fan used for the purpose of distributing supply air to a room, space, or area. Uh, so the air handler in this case is shown down here. 99% uh, of the time in Texas we don't have basement, so it's, it's going to be the unit in your attic. Next is makeup air. Uh, makeup air is air that is provided to replace air being exhausted. So that is, uh, you know, as we pull air out of your house, basically we need to add fresh air. Uh, so that will be your outside air. Um, can also be considered makeup air. Next is outside air. Uh, this is air from the outside of the building intentionally conveyed by openings or ducts to rooms or conditioning equipment. Or rooms or conditioning equipment. So that is, uh, you know, essentially as they pull, as you condition air and pull it in, uh, you know, you'll have air that gets lost through bad seals and windows or, you know, just people leave the door open or exhaust. It is the air that's pulled in to add back into the system. Next is return air. Uh, this is air from the conditioned area that is returned to the conditioning equipment or reconditioning. So return air is air that's already been supplied once and pulling back into your air handler unit. So if you ever go and look in your attic and you see where your air handler is, if you go and look in the ceiling below that, there's going to be, that's where your uh, filter is going to be and there's going to be like a grate or a grill that's pulling air back in. Uh, and they use return air because it's a lot easier to condition air that's already been conditioned once. Uh, you know, think about here in Texas when it's 100 degrees, your air handling unit can't cool 100 degree air down to 70 or 75 just from hot air. Basically, you have to cool the air, you know, it'll cool it down 15, 20 degrees, and then it will recycle it and return it to the unit and it will cool it again. So essentially, it, it makes it a lot easier to hit your target temperature. Next is supply air, and that is air being conveyed to a conditioned area through a duct or plenum from a heat exchanger or a heating, cooling, absorption, or evaporating cooling system. So that's basically, you know, all of your air that's being dumped out of your ducts into your house that's already been conditioned. Now BTU uh, over H, this is a listed maximum capacity of any appliance, absorption unit, or uh, burner expressed in British thermal, thermal units and input per hour unless otherwise noted. So essentially it's just a measurement of energy. Next we have combustion air. That's the total amount of air provided to the space that contains fuel burning equipment. Includes air for fuel combustion, drafts, hood dilution, and ventilation of equipment enclosure. When combustion happens, you're using up oxygen in the air. So the combustion air is adding back in the air that's being used for combustion. If you didn't have that, lower the oxygen enough to where you would lose combustion. 
Next is the condenser. That's the part of the system designed to liquefy refrigerant vapor by removal of heat. If you think about your house AC, you have the unit inside in the attic. So that is your air handle unit. Then you have a condenser outside, which is the either uh, square or cylinder piece that's outside of your house with a fan in it. Uh, the condenser is in this in the outdoor unit. Essentially, it turns the refrigerant from a vapor back into a uh, liquid. So your condensing unit, this is the mechanical refrigeration system consisting of one or more power driven compressors, condensers, liquid receivers, if provided, and the regularly furnished accessories that have been factory assembled and tested prior to installation. Next is condition space. This is an area, room, or space normally occupied and being heated or cooled for human habitation by any equipment. So that is essentially any area that is being heated or cooled. Fire damper. This is the automatic closing metal assembly consisting of one or more louvers, blades, slats, or veins that close up upon detection of heat so as to restrict the passage of flames and is listed to the applicable recognized standards. So they have what are called fire rated walls. Uh, fire rated walls are areas that, that need to be partitioned off so that they don't burn in case of fire. Uh, those areas still have to be conditioned, so you have to have duct to run through. Uh, run through those areas. You know, a few examples would be like stairwells, mechanical rooms. Uh, they have actually, you know, depending on the system, either fire or smoke damper. As soon as those sense uh, heat or smoke, they'll shut closed so as to not introduce smoke into that area. Next is a smoke damper. This is a damper arranged to seal off airflow automatically through part of an air duct so as to restrict the passage of smoke and is listed to the applicable recognized standards. Uh, next we have volume damper. So this is any device when installed will restrict, retard, or direct the flow of air in any duct or the products of combustion in any heat, heat producing equipment, its vent, connector, vent, or chimney. That is uh, essentially a way to or, uh, physically choke down a duct. You see this, this slat in here, you would pull this lever up and down and you could restrict the amount of air going through this duct. And next is duct. That is any tube or a conduit for transmission of air, fumes, vapors, or dust. You've probably seen duct work. Uh, you know, a lot of times you go into a store where it's an open ceiling, and you'll see the, the big tubes going through with the with diffusers dropping down. Uh, basically, it's you know that's your that's all the duct work. Next is the evaporator. That is a part of the refrigeration system in which liquid refrigerant is vaporized to produce refrigeration. So if we go back up to this picture, the evaporator coil, that's the one on the inside of the house. So you'll have your, you'll have your refrigeration run through a, a pipe and into this coil, and then it'll blow air across this coil. And the cold gas is being run through this, uh, essentially a radiator, and it'll cool off, the air will pick up coolness off of this coil and then blow it out into your house. Next is heating system. This is a warm air heating plant uh, consisting of a heat exchanger enclosed in a casing from which the heated air is distributed through ducts to various rooms and areas. The heating system includes the outside air, return air, supply air system, and all accessories, apparatuses, and equipment installed in connection. So that is just the entire uh, heating system uh, you have here for, uh, for any sort of heating application. Next we have hood, that is an air intake connected to a mechanical exhaust system for collecting vapors, fumes, smoke, dust, steam, heat, or outdoor odors from, at, or near equipment placed in areas where generated, produced, or released. So the easiest way to describe this would probably be uh, if you have a, a hood or even a, a microwave that has a vent on it, that's considered a, a, that's considered a hood. Sometimes in houses it'll have a you know a separate hood that's ducted outside that you can turn on and pull smoke and vapors from your stove out to the outside. You know a lot of a lot of times the microwaves just have a almost like a recycling you know to run it through a, a filter and then just blow it out of the, the front of the microwave. Although sometimes they are ducted outside as well. Next is occupancy. This is the purpose for which a building or part thereof is used or intended to be used. This is used a lot of times in calculating the amount of airflow or the amount of um, light a certain area needs. This is predefined by the architect and will be used in calculations. Next is occupied space. Uh, 
Uh, Occupy space is an enclosed space intended for human activities, excluding those spaces intended primarily for other purposes such as storage rooms and equipment rooms that are occupied that are only occupied occasionally and for short periods of time. Uh, you know, so occupied spaces would be uh, break rooms, offices, conference rooms, you know, things where people will be in there for extended periods of time versus a uh, storage closet or an electrical room. Uh, those aren't occupied spaces. And then we have plenum. Plenum is an air compartment or chamber, including uninhabited crawl spaces, areas above a ceiling or below a floor, including air spaces below a raised floor for computer data processing centers or attic spaces. To that one or more ducts are connected and that form a part of uh, either the supply, return, or exhaust air system, other than the occupied space being conditioned. So in this picture, the plenum will be above the ceiling and below the floor here. Next, we have a unit heater. This is a heating appliance designed for non-residential space heating and equipment equipped with an integral means of circulation of air. So unit heaters are going to be used for unoccupied spaces, such as stairwells, mechanical rooms, fire riser rooms. Basically, it's when equipment or something needs to not freeze, but it doesn't need to be kept at a, you know, a 70, 72 degree temperature. Uh, essentially, a, almost like an emergency heater. Next is ventilation systems. That is all the equipment intended or installed for the purpose of supplying air to or removing air from any room or space by mechanical means, other than the equipment that is a portion of an environmental heating, cooling, absorption, or evaporative cooling system. That is all of the terms from the Uniform Mechanical Code, and we will now go to the go to the HVAC slides and talk about some of the uh, different cooling systems.